Okay. Oh, this is so good. This Tonight is so in good. financial news, experts grow concerned over the trajectory of Vital Medical Group, who was acquired this year by Ethos Investment Properties, but has since seen their stock price sharply decline for the 10th consecutive month. Many attribute the poor performance to their recent failures to get their latest drug, alanatorcine, approved by the FDA. The wonder drug is said to be a combination pain relief and antibiotic that is effective against multi-drug resistant organisms. Yet some claim the failure to get FDA approval is just further proof of mismanagement by the Lysander family, who owns the majority stake in Ethos Investment. Specifically, Silas Lysander Sr., who has failed to attend a single board meeting at Vital Medical Group since the passing of his wife Anna last year. Eyes are now on the Lysander children, who hold minor shares in Ethos Investment, as one is likely to be put in charge of the Midwestern pharmaceutical giant. One possibility is Dorian Lysander, who holds a chairman position at EIP and has been spotted spending late nights at the company with his father. Or perhaps the reins will go to Dr. Silas Lysander Jr., the only one in the family with actual medical experience, currently practicing at Rush Chicago Medical Center. Meanwhile, less optimistic investors believe the reins may be given to the younger and less busy Willow Lysander, a recent graduate at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, who's been seen spending more time at the family's hotel chain restaurants since her sister Val left home to start their fashion career. With me now is senior analyst Herbert Crane to discuss the possible outcomes. Herb, should investors be worried? Silas turns off the TV. And steps away. Oh, me He's or dad? Sorry, Silas Lysander Sr. Papa. Okay, sorry. <laughs> he steps away from the TV at his office at Ethos Investment Properties. The large office room is pristine with a large glass tinted windows. One side, the large windows showing the clean modern offices of all of his employees. It's late at night, but of course, there are still employees here. The other side of his office shows the dark city night skyline overlooking the Chicago Loop, or what Kindred call the Hive. It's been months, nine months, since he brought his children into this world. Nine months since everything changed for the family of the Lysanders. Nine months since he found out the truth about his wife, Anna. She'd been keeping kindred, enemies of the family, enemies of the Camarilla, those who they had previously captured and agreed to with the Primogen and Prince of Chicago to keep in torpor buried away at the bottom of Lake Michigan. In what she saw to protect her family, she took these kindred and drank their blood till the very last drop was gone and took their power for her own. Betrayed by this, Silas Lysander Sr. And the patriarch of the family, Jacques Lysander, decided to take matters into their own hands. And Anna met her final death. As her children stood in the room and watched her body vanish in their home that they grew up in. Silas Sr. ponders these thoughts and reflections of what happened to his family all those months ago. And now his children becoming in their own, in their own clans, as he, all those months ago, but even before that, had a plan, a grand plan, to bring his children into this life, into kindred society, and bring them into the Camarilla. But rather than turn them all into Ventru, as his own clan is, he handpicked 
various people, various kindred in Chicago and other regions. He thought would be a good match for his children, which clans he thought they would fit due to their own talents and skills. Yes, like a, like a wine tasting, he picked out which one he wanted them to be part of. And in an own like business transaction, he decided to bring his children into this world. The eldest son, Silas Lysander Jr., Clan Tremere, a doctor, continuing to practice even after all of these months. He spent his time isolated, not much different really from what he previously did. He still works at Rush Medical, but now he spends more time at the Tremere Chantry in Chicago. He's met the regent of the Chantry and other kindred and has started making his own. He was rewarded as he had told some things to the Chantry after the events that happened with his family. Yet the rest of his family does not know this, but he has been building his own reputation within the pyramid of the Tremere. Then there is Dorian, Clan Ventru, embraced by his own father, the only one to be embraced into the Ventru clan within his family. Dorian for much time had been trying to make his own way within Ethos Investment Properties, the family business, but has always been met with contention by his father all along the way and his own frustrations growing between both of them a rocky relationship they've had from the start, and now it continues, even between sire and child. Dorian has been continuing to work at EIP in the evenings. Still doesn't see his father as much as he'd want to, but also trying to figure out what to do next with his family, as he has built a family for his own. He has his wife, and two children, and now another on the way. Unsure what Dorian will be doing next. He's trying to take it night by night and figure out what his next steps are. And then there's Val of Clan Toreador. Young and beautiful model aloof to much of what her family has been doing. In her own words, abandoned? But the roses of Clan Toreador have many plans for Val. And they've taken her under her wing. She's been quite busy, and much of her family has not seen her in these past months. A few messages, letters, but she's off doing her own things with her own career and her own plans among Clan Toreador. Last you heard, she might not even be in Chicago anymore. She's been traveling. New York, maybe? Or was it overseas? It's hard to say. You all don't keep up as much anymore. And last but not least, Willow of Clan Malkavian. An artist tortured and tormented by her own mind in some ways. She had just graduated, majoring in fine arts, ready to start her own life and begin things of her own within her own circles of friends and people that she had met along the way. Now she lives in loneliness and isolation in many ways, Willow was affected the most by all of this, as she had her own life and things she was doing. 
And now that's all drastically changed. Now her closest friend is her rat that she keeps in her bag, who occasionally climbs onto her shoulder and whispers in her ear. Machiavelli, her companion, the only one she can talk to. All of this held by their true patriarch, Jacques Lysander, who is many years older of kindred than the Lysander children and even Silas Lysander Sr. Trying to keep his family alive, but he knows more than anybody how to do one thing, survive and keep his family together and keep the secrets that the Lysander family line has very close to their chests. Now, as it's been many, many months, the four of you have not seen each other much. You've been doing your own thing as when you were first embraced, your father kept you all very close to her home to learn how to feed and how to function as kindred. And you've mostly gotten the hang of it. You know your disciplines, you understand how your things operate as a kindred for the most part. You still don't really know much about the Camarilla or much of the society, and you haven't met many other kindred. Silas, you've probably met the most out of all of your siblings because you happen to come by the Chantry, but the rest of you haven't met too many others. But you're keeping to yourselves, and your father has reached out and invited you all to another family dinner. It's the last one you had was that family dinner, the family dinner with mother, where everything went wrong. So you all may have your own feelings about this, having another one of these dinners, except this time, Silas invites your wife, Dorian, knowing that you may want to rebuild things with your wife. You have, he wants to keep your family close for his own reasons, but okay. so, it's so up to is, you to decide. So this is a family, like, it's a like blush of life dinner. Like, it's this a is... family dinner. And you know that your wife doesn't like to stay long at these dinners because she has to put the kids to sleep. And if That's she stays true. out later than nine, 10 o'clock, she's got to put them to bed. So the first hour or two of this dinner is a, normal family dinner and then Got after it. she leaves then it gets to the real family dinner i see but your wife is actually rather excited to see your siblings because it's been a while since she's seen any of her her sister-in-law brother-in-law it's been years for her so she's excited, though a little on edge, as the few times you have seen her, it's been on edge. She has many questions, and you have to come up with whatever story you can make up for whatever reason as to why you're so busy with the company right now. The big, is it, an, is it a new investors that are coming in and it's all hands on deck? So many things you have to come up with for why you don't come home and why you don't see her during the day. But the two of you are in a limo on your way to dinner with the kids, Sebastian and Remy. And your wife, she is any day now, she is due to have your next child. She's very pregnant. Yes. So she's a little excited to get out of the house because she hasn't been getting out of the house much. And Adeline, your wife, sits there and it's been kind of awkward and quiet for the first 15 minutes or so of the drive. And she finally, she finally breaks the silence. So things have been good at home. I have a new midwife. Um, so, uh, hoping they'll help with the delivery and we've got the 
Nanny hired to help with things around the house, and um, well, that's good. It's going along. Yes. You know, if you need more help, like we can hire another nanny. We can get another midwife. Like whatever you need, it's. We have plenty, Dorian. We have plenty at the house. You comfortable? He he tries to adjust your her pillow uh, that she's got. <sighs> Yes, as comfortable as I can be, I guess. I, I'm excited to see everybody, your family. I mean, I see Silas sometimes at, at the hospital, at the doctor when I go in. Um, he's, you know, asked about everything and it's, you know, it's just he always schedules the checkups so late at night and... Like, if he ever wants to see, I, I, I just, I don't know, like. Well, you know, that's, you know, he's going out of his way to make time for you. He's, he's busy. That's not really his main. Yes, yes, I know. Field. Yeah, I, I just, where have you been, Dorian? Let's just get to it. Like, you're just. Is it Look, somebody I'm... else? Like, you can just tell me. No. No, how could you say that? I can't... Because things have changed. We have a child coming. Another child. And... I can't... Don't you have... You must have paternity leave or something at that company. Or do they only give maternity leave because they're one of those sexist companies? It doesn't really work that way. Like, Look. They need me there. They can't do what we're doing without me. It's 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 not really like somebody to fill my place and There's always somebody to fill the place. They're he's telling you lies. Your father is telling you lies. Look, I know it's been hard. I just need you to trust me. I'm I'm doing this for us. You know, I'm working hard for our family right now. We have everything, Silas. We have everything. A beautiful house on Gold Coast. We have nannies beckoning to our everything that we need for these kids. They go to the most prestigious private preschool. Who, who sends a child to a preschool? No, that's not our for money. Private that's school. dad's money, all right? It's trust money. It's I don't... I need more, I need more power in this company if we're going to keep the lifestyle that we have. If our kids are going to go to the best schools, if they're going to have the best opportunities. I mean, that goes away, right? If I, if I don't, if I don't work for this company, that's, that's all gone. Guess that hasn't changed. Same things you always tell me. It's fine. You know what? Let's just try to enjoy this dinner. I can catch up with Willow. Is is Val still doing that thing, like her traveling thing or whatever? Oh, um, Alan. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure she's out there doing her modeling thing. Every once in a while, she needs some help with some legal issue, and I you know, get one of the lawyers to draw up some papers for her, but I haven't really heard from her. Well, I guess I'm just going to try to enjoy the night. It's not good for me to get all stressed out right before, you know, right before the baby, so... um I will, uh, just enjoy the nice dinner. He, uh, he reaches for her hand, uh, to hold it. Th things are gonna get better, I... They're gonna change, it's not gonna be like this forever, I, I, I promise. And I know I've been a little closed off, but... There's a, there's a lot going on. And I'm, I'm just doing it to keep us safe. 
I want to believe you, Dorian and Lysander. I really do. And you two continue in the limo. It's a bit quiet again. You eventually get to your father's home, your family home. That home on Gold Coast, all the way up at the top, a penthouse, where you once grew up, and now your father still lives there with Jacques. You pull into the garage, the driver lets you in, or the attendant lets you in. Your driver opens your door, your two kids get out with your wife. You grab her hand and help her up. And you all head up the elevator all the way to the 54th floor of this building. Overlooking the beautiful Lake Michigan, all the way up the glass elevator views the night sky. It's about 8.30 p.m., so pretty early in the night still, and it's quite dark. And you arrive in the lobby, and you see your brother, Silas Lysander Jr. Silas, you, you just got off of... Actually, you just got back from the Chantry. You didn't work tonight, but you were busy with other work things. As you see your brother enter the room, it's the first time you've seen him in quite some time. Dorian. Silas. How are you, you doing? You look well. Hmm. Thank you, so do you. Uh, it's he gives good. a little smirk. It's Eddie, good to see you, Silas. How are you? <laughs> you oh, you are radiant. Look at you. Why are you why are you here? You're due uh, in like two weeks. You should be in bed. I needed to get out of the house. I've oh. been cooped up there and knowing there was a family dinner, I just I haven't seen you all in what feels like years. Well, I've seen you, but she's I mostly here for the food. I don't blame True. her. She's, look, she's feeding too. You got to, you know, you got to get it where it comes, you know. Yes. Yes. How, how, are you feeling well? How's my yes. niece or nephew doing? Any kicks? Any pains? Uh, n no. It, I mean, it's felt a little like, I don't know. Um, it, it's just weird. It's it's felt different than the last two. That's all I can hmm. say. How so? Uh, it feels. I don't. I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it. Well, what do you mean? Why have you uh, said this before? I mean, you're not a doctor, Dorian. You're not going to be able to help. Still. Uh, okay. What, what, I, do you, what do you mean weird? I, I'm just like, I don't know. I, I usually do get cravings and everything, and I have had certain food cravings, but I'm like way hungrier than normal, uh, than the la like the last time, and it just... I don't know. Something just feels feels different. Okay, well, come and see it, me immediately. It's it's fine. Like I don't feel ill. Um, you know, all the normal just, just signs. Go see the, just go see him. Like I, we don't. Yeah, I'll, I will fit you in whenever you can come by. I. I appreciate that. I. Look, it could be nothing. In, in you know, it's an hour out of my day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe sometime. I know you work nights, so uh, if it's not too late, maybe I'll come by. Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it tonight? Like, why are we? Why are we waiting? If she's like, uh, if, she, if there's something uh, that might be wrong yeah. with her, like, why would we no, even? No, wait? no, no, no. It's it's fine. It's fine. I. Well, why not? Why? I mean, we can open up the nearest oh, clinic. No, I, I well, have the keys. It doesn't matter, I, right? Like, we can. Look, Silas probably just got off work. We don't need to concern him. I feel fine. I, we were just here for dinner. I, I made it here. So. Oh, all right. Well, you if know, you... let's just, let's enjoy dinner. We can talk about it. Yes. We can talk yes. about it after. It, it, af after dinner, I have a stethoscope 
with me. I can grab it. I can check a pulse. I can listen to the baby. It's it's not a big deal. We can sure. we can find a private room. We don't have to do it in front of everyone. It can be our little secret. Yes, of course. That's that's fine. Um, let's head up. Where's where's father? Uh, where's dad? Uh, <laughs> I forgot that's uh, why we're here. Yes, and you all. Um, Get yourselves ready to head upstairs. Uh, and your father is waiting upstairs, but Willow, you have been here already and you've been waiting for yep. your siblings to sitting. arrive. You've been sitting and disassociating a bit. <laughs> uh, As I do. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> the worst thing. <laughs> the worst thing she can do. It's well, but not in the same room that father is in, right? Or no, he... you've been sitting by yourself uh, yeah. at the table, actually. You've been sitting at the dinner table, waiting. Your mind is elsewhere. You're, yeah. Yeah. you're thinking about the last time you were here. Mm -hmm. The things you saw, the things your brother said, the things your father said, the things Jacques said the last look of light from your mother, the last view of her red eyes, the premonition you had with the shadows surrounding her, you begin to see it again, the shadows in this room, everywhere. Hmm. The I whispers. It, it... It does make you hate being here, and you begin to see things and hear things around, but the one saving grace is that little rat in your bag. He comes out and crawls up and grounds you. She gives him a little pet immediately, just a little finger under his chin. Just, you know, like a, yeah, it's a comfort. It's a, it's like a safety blanket of, I touch the soft fur and it makes me feel okay. Um, and you see in the, sh as you're looking at these shadows and not sure what's real or not, you see something lurking in the shadows. Your uncle, Jacques. I focus, I focus in on <laughs> as I'm <laughs> petting Machiavelli. Jacques, you appear from your obfuscation, hidden in the shadows, looking at Willow. Hey, there's my favorite granddaughter. How you doing? Did you make yourself apparent to me, or was I able to see through it? Oh, I, of course I would want to see you. But I'm sure you're getting better at your skills, huh? H have you seen ghosts yet? Something like that. Yeah, that's right. You Malkavians. <laughs> you can see everything. That's the problem, isn't it? I don't think so. She gives you a very pointed look. Um... She's kind of looking past you, like into the shadows that you came from. Came from. from. I don't know, is it just you here? Hey, you tell me. You don't want to specialize. <laughs> what is this dinner for again? It's a big night for us. We got a sort of a, a meeting to go to, you know? Meeting? Yeah, it's a. We're going to make new friends. Oh, I thought yeah. we were content to keep everyone separate for a good nine months. Now we want to make friends. Not these kind of friends. These are special friends. These are the kind you want to keep real close or real far, depending on who they are. And it's at that long sigh that your brothers enter the room. Silas and Dorian. More excited, but not oh. much more. <laughs> My little Willow, how are you? 
Dorian has a big smile on his face. He's happy to see you. Willow. Uh, she leans. She's sitting on the dinner table. Because <laughs> uh, that's the energy. Um, and moves her eyes from Jacques to her brother's. Been waiting here forever. You guys are not usually late. Dorian, Silas, good to see you both. Jacques. Mm. It's been, what, three, six months, maybe, since we had a little get-together like this, a proper, a proper feeding, proper meal. Oh, who's counting? Ah, and your, your wife! Ah, and it's, the grandkids! Uh, 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 yes, um... Uh, uh, I keep wanting to say Adelaide. Adeline walks in with a small Remy and a small Sebastian, who are both toddlers now. Uh, well, I believe Sebastian is still infant. Yeah, yeah. I uh, think Sebastian is still one years old. One years Remy old. Remy would have would have hit is just over two. Just over oh, two. One and two. Oh, oh Remy, look how big you've got. Um. Uh, Jock immediately is hands on, hugging the kids. Oh, oh uh, <laughs> uh, good to see you, uh, Jacques. Um, it's been Adeline, some time. Good to see yes. you. You doing well? Uh, you look like you're about to pop. <laughs> yes, uh, I am. Um, I could be two weeks, uh, they say. So. It's about to happen. Another, another little Lysander. <laughs> mm, oh, isn't Dorian the lucky man, huh? Yes. Is yes. it finally going to be a girl? Oh, oh Willow, I, I hope so. Uh, She's been I really to hope. keep it a secret. Mm. Yes. Well, if, if it's a boy, it's fine too. You know, we've got two good, strong boys and could be that we get a third. Yeah, so you could fine. use a sister to even them out. She uh, like looks between us, looks between like her two brothers and, you know. <laughs> well, think it, that is how it started for you, both two boys and then a girl. So maybe it'll be the same for us. Uh, we'll see. I, I see the family got the high chairs. They're so fancy. Um, I think where is, uh, and as she says that and begins to look around, Entering the room with his presence, Daddy, looking down mm. on you all, well dressed, his f uh, adjusting the uh, what are these things called? The cuff um, the cufflinks, cuff -links. Cuff -links. Ooh. adjusting the cufflinks on his suit, kind of putting it prim and proper and adjusting it. He enters the room and looks well. upon his children. Do we want to look at these people up close? Uh, a little bit bigger for everybody? Yeah, a Zoomify? Yes. Yeah, a we zoom. haven't gotten a Zoomify. No brother what? Grim after what? a Zoomify. <laughs> oh, sorry. Turn. I forgot that that turns on. My bad. Yeah, let's there look at go. the Zoomify. Yeah, here oh we go. Silas, Silas Lysander Sr. and his children and Jacques. So good. Silas looks at you all. His head high, nose up, looking down. My children, I see you are all well. Good to see you. Hey, Dad. And Adeline, of course, it is good to see you as well. It's been some time. Yes, it's been... Oh, it must be three years, the last Christmas you invited us to. This was before the kids were even born. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and I see you have another... Another coming. Very soon. You all can feel the awkwardness in the air between your father and Dorian's wife. They don't Doesn't really. Sound human. Yes, there's <laughs> there's no real connection here. There's no warmth. I mean, there was never warmth with any of you. Of course, there's no warmth with her. And he says, "Well, very well then. Uh, dinner is on its way 
we all would like to have a seat. Yeah. Uh, He's gonna uh, pull out a chair for for Adeline. And do you, she does sit. Addie, do you need a pillow or anything? Are you okay? Oh, I have mine. I should be fine. Um, okay. If you wouldn't mind Dorian helping with the kids. And oh, Adeline, can, can Remy mm-hmm. sit with me? Of course, Willow. And she moved, er, they, Dorian will move the, the, the chair. to sit with me. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I don't think he would, I don't, I don't know kids. Do they need high chairs at like he's one two, years old, right? yeah, two years do. old? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's still little. No kids. You know? <laughs> do I don't know, chairs? I don't know children. Do they need... <laughs> he's still little, yeah. So uh, two. Can you leave them alone? That yeah, right. Does, does the infant need a high chair? Can <laughs> yeah. they just like sit and, yeah. yeah. Clearly I know. So yes, oh, uh, they but, bring the high chair over and uh, sit, uh, sit Remy next to Willow. Mm-hmm. And now Sebastian. You, uh, you listen to Auntie Willow, okay? You, you behave. I let Machiavelli, I, <gasps> I let him go play with Remy. <laughs> and on, on the little, the little uh, table on the high chair is Machiavelli just crawling around. Yeah. Your, your father looks disdainingly upon this. Willow, are you going to have a rat at the table that's unsanitary? He's quite clean. You know, they're cleaner than most humans, Father. Yes, but they're also the number one vector for disease, Willow. I think I heard about that on the news. (laughs) He ignores the question. He he kind of lets it sit at that, and he doesn't press it on too much. Thanks, Dad. He he does, you know, kind of sigh and sits down. That's baby privilege. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and you all sit um he sits of course at the head of the table uh where do you all sit at this long 10 people to 10 to 12 people dining table so i would have went to go sit right next to like dad at the head of the table and then my wife to my right Okay. And she has uh, Sebastian next to her uh, in in their high chair. Um, and yeah, and she begins kind of like helping him and getting him all adjusted. Who mm-hmm. takes the other seat next to dad? I do. You do? Okay, I'll mm-hmm. sit next to you then. I'm sitting next to the grandkids. Okay, well, that works because then yeah. I have Remy well, on my, my other great, side. Great, mm-hmm. great grandkids. Which, yes. one, which one, Remy or or Sebastian? Because they're right now. Which, they're currently on separate sides of the table. Oh, then I'll be next to Remy. I think. Okay. He's so the, the oldest. Other... Yeah. Two. Mm-hmm. Perfect. There we go. We're so you all sit, and there's another kind of awkward tension and pause as you all get seated, and the food does get brought out. There are uh, caterers who bring. Lots of food for you all, and it is normal food. And so it does bring upon a awkward moment for you all where you have to figure out if you're going to have to blush of life for this evening uh, to actually enjoy this food. And realizing that your wife is here, it probably would be best for you to do so. The food is uh, a nice, uh, it's a delicious Steak dinner for all of you that's brought. Oh, uh, just bring it to us raw. <laughs> <laughs> there is also drinks and wine, of course, things for the children as well, small baby foods, and uh, a well assortment s- of like vitamin juices for your wife to help oh, her. Nice. Um, and they bring all of this as well uh, out to the table. Here, Adeline, let me help you with Remy. Uh, I just took my diabetes medication, so. And using that excuse, I'm going to focus on feeding Remy and making sure he doesn't make a mess. Yes. So, Um, the, yes, Dorian. Oh, so you're saying, so we have to blush of life right now? So, if you all would like to partake in this dinner, um, I would like you all to make me a rouse check for your blush of life. 
uh, and that's all you have to do. And I believe uh, for everybody watching in the audience, we're actually now using Demiplane, which is uh, ha has recently come out with an entire uh, Vampire the Masquerade Nexus. Um, I'm, we're not sponsored, by the way. I just really like Demiplane. Uh, it's been working real well for us because the character sheets are great. Um, so I yeah. believe the uh, Rouse check is at the top right corner of your character sheets. Okay. Let's do a little rolly roll. Oh no! What happens if we got no successes? Um, you get hungrier, and it does not work. You can roll it again to attempt to get a success. Uh, I, should I click a little box off in my hunger? Yes. Okay. Um, by the way, you all should be at one hunger. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I meant... Yes. So if you succeed, you successfully blush of life, and uh, you're all good. Although... Actually, no. For blush of life, um, you you rouse check, and it just works, I believe. And um, it's just a matter of hunger. it's just a matter of if you get hungry or not. Okay, um, gotcha. I was, Got it. Yeah. So, uh, so you, yeah. So Willow gets hungrier. What about the other two? Do you guys? I also failed. So you get hungrier. Yeah, I failed also. Hey, um, but we're all doing the thing, huh? Okay, so you're all hungrier, but you at least are able to appear human for this scene. So you can breathe even, you can blink, you can emit warmth, you can eat, drink, and have all the other pleasures of what you had uh, as, a previous, as a previous human for the most part. You may get a little sick later after you eat, but for now, you can enjoy the food. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, you got any better scotch than this? You know, if we're gonna have a oh, nice God. dinner occasion, he, we could bring you, up something nice. Son, you know we always have better scotch. I didn't know tonight was a top shelf night. Well, it is the first time we've seen each other in quite Nine a long months. time. My wife is here. Nine months. And I think this is the first time you've met my grandkids. Yes, um... Perhaps you can introduce me. Oh my god, you're a grandpa now, Dad. Yes. Um, That's right. Cute. It's an old man. Well, yeah, but we knew that. <clears throat> Nasty, uh, here comes to with the kids. Well, I, I'll bring Remy's right next to me. I'll, Remy. <laughs> I entice Remy with Machiavelli. So I'm like, Follow. So I will walk Remy up to Silas, to dad. Look, and here's Remy. Remy has his little hands um, kind of outstretched and Silas looks down and it's, if you were to watch this in a scene, it is a empowering, towering man in dressed to the nines in a suit, child. looking down at the small child and there's no feeling of connection. He looks down at the child like it's an object. But uh, he also has the blush of life. Um, I forgot to roll that. Let me grab my uh, dice. Ah, uh, Silas. Okay, he succeeds. So he does feel warm to the touch, and he does pick up... A nudge. Remy. And puts Remy on his lap. Oh, cute. It is good to see the Lysander name continue on. He says that, yeah. and it's so... Oh, and, shit. And, your, and, and your wife just looks at you, Dorian, when he says that. And, uh, I, it's, it's... Just let it go. Interesting. Is it, what's, what's it been, Father? Like 28 years since you picked up a child? Yes, I oh. I don't usually spend oh. time around children. No. Hmm. Not the 28. Why don't you uh, give him a hug? He gives the child a uh, awkward squeeze. Um, 
Does Remy love it, though? Oh, don't pressure him. My brother's always been like this. Anna and I are always the ones who are more friendly with kids, so. Yeah. And uh, the kid begins to kind of cry a little bit. <laughs> oh, God. All right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't think you could fuck that up that badly. I, wow. I was still uh, standing, so I will take Remy back to his little seat. I'll pick him up. I'll take Remy back to a seat. I give him Machiavelli. I'm like, look, little rat. And it's Willow okay. is able to distract the child. It's okay. It's all and right. And bring it to less of a crying state. Although it does look again over at Jock and begins hey, to. Hey, little guy. <laughs> well up and begin to cry a little more. How's it going? And. <laughs> this continues for some time, this dinner, and it's, so painful. it's about an hour or so of this strange, awkward family interactions that you all have. And it you try to make it feel normal. You try to make it feel like something you may have felt in the past, but no matter what you do, it doesn't feel normal at all. None of this feels natural, it feels forced, it feels cold and stale. And unless there's anything of major importance that you all want to do, eventually your wife says, well, it might start to be time for me to bring the kids back and, you know, put them, put them down to bed. You know, this oh, is why God, I don't so really soon? complain that much. Yeah, you know, their bedtime is usually actually like right about now and they're going to just get crankier and crankier, you know? Oh, well, maybe sometime I could uh, help you uh, watch them. That would be great, Willow. I would really appreciate that. They're just so cute. Anytime. Yeah, she's you're really welcome. good with animals and kids. Thanks. Yes. I can, I can bring Machiavelli. It seems like Remy really loves him. Yes. Um, and. How are you feeling? Uh, you know, I, I feel like it, I just kicked. Uh, oh. I don't, I, I felt it a little bit earlier. Like there was a, a, a small kick. I don't, I, this is, but that's normal, right? They are supposed to kick. That's absolutely so, normal. But yeah. Okay, well. I can give you a quick checkup if you'd like. I had the clinic <laughs> I Let called ahead. I, I called before. I made sure that they're that they're ready. We don't, We've got staff ready to go. Yes, we don't have to go to the. Yes, Dorian. Uh, we do have some other things we need to discuss. So I don't think there's any need. Your father speaks up. Well, okay. Um, that's fine, Silas. I, I there are other doctors there too. I'm just saying it's. If it's really that big of a deal, you can have Silas take a quick look. Right here, or not take here, me, but... It'll take me 10 minutes. Ha more yeah. than happy to do so. Jacques has his clawed hand on your wife's belly for a moment. I don't feel it kicking. <laughs> um, well, uh, maybe it'll kick again now that you touched it. Um, they, they do say uh, that as you get older, the nerves in your hand start to go. Maybe it's no, the dead No, I say that, Silas. That's real, that's they, real they cute. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, let's, fine, if you know what, Silas, fine, if, if, if it'll make Dorian be of course, less, of course. okay, thank yes. you. <clears throat> and he will take her to a, one of the many, many rooms we have in our house and get a empty. stethoscope and, and check her pulse and make sure her vitals are okay with the tools that he has. Yes, and you're just using your tools right you're not uh i'm not taking you're just blood the no, no, tools no. you're not uh yeah Maybe. you're just checking her as a normal doctor would correct not using okay i'm not using any thermaturgy or anything like that okay you uh do listen check her pulse her vitals everything's normal everything's healthy uh you do one thing that you sense as you're uh using the stethoscope on her stomach is you feel a heartbeat. Feels, sounds normal. 
but you hear a faint sound of a second. A second heartbeat, and you, you listen, and you, and and it's almost like you're listening a lot. And she's like, "Is everything okay?" She's she's getting a little concerned, but you're double checking, listening. No, you, you hear a second heartbeat. Your your senses kind of tell you this as you're, you know, a bit more of a heightened sense. Sure. Uh, you hear two heartbeats. Addie, when's the last ultrasound you had? Uh, like a couple of months ago. They said I didn't really need one at the, you know, at this trimester. I mean, they might have checked and I, they, I mean, I'll probably get checked again, like next week, but I, they, did, they didn't tell you you were having twins. Twins. There's, you got two babies in you, Addie. Uh, no way. You, you, are you, are you sure? I swear on my okay. medical degree. Um, right, we're, def I... we're definitely hiring another nanny then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dorian, did, did, you, did you join them? Um, or were you like waiting or anything? Were you, are you also in the room? No, no, I'd be, uh, I'd be with okay. them. I mean, yes. unless you didn't. No, 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 she, uh, she welcomes you. Uh, I, I can't believe it. Um. Twins, okay. That's, uh, <sighs> congratulations, Dorian. <laughs> Two more uh, little that's life crazy. Sanders. Wow. Um, yeah, this is, this is amazing. Uh, I can't, oh my gosh, we're going to do it. You had it in me, you know? <laughs> uh, she shakes her head. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I can't recommend hard enough that you should come by and get a full rundown before your due date. Yes, I honestly, I haven't really thought about it. I know you're supposed to go multiple times. I just, Look, it's your I third trip around the block. I get it. You know, you just get used to these things, but yeah, we, we have the resources. I can recommend a couple of great OBGYNs and if you need them, Yes, or, I think. Or if you want to come see me, but I I know working, me working nights has been made made it difficult. Yeah, um, I I appreciate it. I will make those appointments, those follow ups, and it'll be we'll be we'll be all good. I appreciate it. Of course. Oh, we should really get going though, Dorian. I need to get the kids out, and we need to. I need to. I need to get them to bed, and I need to process this. <laughs> Gosh, twins. Okay. All right. It's gonna, uh, gonna be a full house for you, Dorian. Maybe, maybe we well, should have checked you've... the genders. Sorry. What if it's a boy, uh, two boys, two girls, boy and a girl? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. We'll find out soon. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yes, I'll have Lucas have even... bring the car up. You drive, uh, drive safe and be careful. I right. will. Good night, Torian. Okay. He, uh, he gives her like a huge hug and a kiss. I'll and make sure he gets home safe after whatever the hell dad wants to talk to us about. Thank you, Silas. You're welcome. And your wife and kids take their leave after a lovely family reunion and now as they do and you see on the cameras that she has driven out of the building thus begins your real family dinner <laughs> family dinner as father readjusts himself in the seat his shoulders standing tall well I thought it would be nice to at least have some semblance of normalcy to start the evening. It's been some time and you all have been doing well for yourselves and your clans. So I figured we could try to have something normal for once. What's wrong with you, Dorian? Your, uh, your blush is worn off already. Uh, I don't know, is that a, 
I well, guess you just look like you've seen a ghost. Hmm. Oh. No, I'm in a good mood. I'm happy. I'm assuming I'm assuming Jack doesn't know about the the news. Nope. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. And Dorian yeah. is not but sharing. Yeah, Dorian, Dorian <laughs> is like grinning, like comes into the room, like mm -hmm. beaming, like he's happy. Mm. You know. Mm. All right, Are we ready to eat. I'm ready to eat, like really eat. Right? It, you guys. You guys. Hungry? Yes. Save your appetites and thirst for later this evening, because we. We'll be having a busy e evening. I hope that you all kept some nicer attire here at the house before you all moved out, because we will be attending an event this evening. Hmm. As a family? Uh, as a family. We were invited to an Elysium. Our first Elysium. Your first Elysium and ours as a family. It is a gathering of all of the kindred of Chicago for an evening of announcements by the prince and time to catch up with each other. Is this like a, like a board meeting? Yes, yeah, something of a new hires meeting for you all. You get to introduce yourselves to all of the other kindred of Chicago. Okay. That's yeah. good. Like a, uh, like a stand up <clears throat> there and pass the talking stick around and. Ah uh, yes, uh, the icebreaker questions. Of course, oh. no, no, no. It <laughs> will be more. F it's quite formal, and he uh, pulls out from his uh, the uh, pocket inside of his suit. He pulls out a small letter, that uh, is sealed with a wax seal with the clan symbol of Ventru. So it is a scepter and a sword kind of crossing in an X. And he slides it down the table for you all to read. Uh, it is a lovely letter. And for all of you in chat, uh, there is a letter. Um, and I'm going to post it in our Discord for you all to read. Um, and I will I'm also, also pulling paste... it up. Yep. And I will read it out loud because Mr. man, Jackson. This this text, you know, you get the fancy text, and it's always very hard to hard That's to true. read. That's true. Uh, hopefully, that works in chat uh, for all of you. So it reads: Kindred of Chicago, Prince Kevin Jackson and the Primogen Council of Chicago cordially invite you to Chicago's Elysium, held today, seventeenth of June at twenty three o'clock at the Symphony Center, at the Hive. A private performance will be held promptly at midnight. Following the performance, Prince Kevin Jackson will dispatch reports and news. The Keeper of Elysium, Annabelle of Clan Toreador, maintains that you uphold and respect Camarilla traditions as well as Elysium traditions, which are violence, unless ordained, punishment by the prince is strictly prohibited within Elysium. Grievances between kindred and others must be kept in check and handled outside Elysium walls. And as per Chicago-specific tradition, kindred outside of the traditional Camarilla circles, such as Anarch and Autark Autarchus, are welcome to attend. This is a private event. Ghouls, retainers, and others will not be permitted. Formal attire is required. Refreshments will be provided. So I hope you all have something a bit nicer to wear. <clears throat> Everything I'm sure sense. I can find something. I should, uh, I suppose, prepare you all for what's to come at this event. Uh, it usually there are different varying types of meetings and held at different locations. This one is a, quite fancier. Sometimes they're held at clubs. Sometimes they are held in smaller settings. Uh, we even had one theme night where it was like rock night and everybody dressed. It was very weird. Usually Kevin Jackson, the prince, uh, likes to keep it a bit more classy, though. So we will have it at a symphony hall in the hive or the loop. Uh, it's best that you all keep very... Uh, 
keep your etiquette high. I've raised you all well enough to be polite to anybody that you meet. Treat people as politely as you can, even if some of them may look down on you as you are freshly turned freshly turned kindred. They may look and say things to you. Just make sure that you uh, keep the respect that I would expect any of my children to have. It's as simple do. as that. There will be a moment during the prince's announcements where he does announce you all formally to Chicago for all the kindred to see. The word has, of course, spread, so many of the circles already know of your existence among our society, but this is more of a formal way to do it so that everybody knows. So you will be asked to be brought on the stage when he makes his announcements for everybody to meet you. You don't really have to say a speech or anything. It's just more who you are and what clans you are uh, represent. So it's kind of like a conference of sorts. Yes. For a conference. Kindred. A yes. kindred conference. Mm. And, uh, conference with a K. Am I, am I going to get a chance to talk to you, Dad, at some point? Like, I'm really tired of going through assistance. Like, can we please? Oh, we're doing this here. Oh. Well, I, just, I do I have... have time tonight, but now we're going to a party, you know? Uh, yes, it's not and a party. we will be. It's not a party? It's the most serious mm. night of the year for us. Well, serious night of whatever, the month, whenever they hold these things. Every night is a serious night. Not like are this. They held, are they held for a specific reason or just you... once a year? Usually, yes, when there's a specific event that needs to happen, they will be called. So it can be random. Uh, this one, I know it's been months since you all have been embraced, but it's not exactly the most urgent of news in Chicago. So it's obviously many months late. So we're the guests of honor then. Not quite. You're the I'm newbies. Sure the I'm sure the prince will have other announcements to share for all of the kindred as well, so it won't be the main attraction, but it will be one of them. Oh. Silas, or, sorry, Dorian. Dorian, we will be meeting other Ventru there as well, so I don't know yeah. how much time you and I will have one-on-one, -on -one, but it will be good for you to make face with the other Ventru, the other Blue Bloods, as we call ourselves. They, of right. course, will just see you as my son, but... Yeah, well, I'm, that's not exactly a new situation for me. Of course. Well, it is a couple of hours away, so you all have a bit of time to freshen yourselves up in whatever way you need to. Just make sure... Don't leave please, because I don't know where you'll be going and where you'll come back. Just stay, stick around here, get yourselves ready, and we will leave promptly at 11 o'clock. Okay. And he gets up and uh, leaves the room, leaving the four of you to uh, remain in the room. All right. So, have you all been really? Honestly, I've been fantastic. Is that a serious question? All right. I just, I mean, fuck it. I just thought I'd connect with my, with my brothers and sisters, you know? Hmm. How are you, Willow? You seem on edge. A uh, normal thing now, right? Are you talking to somebody? What, what do you mean? No. Why not? Well, that would require me to meet anybody. You can always come talk to me. That's different. You could all always come talk to me, of course. 
Sure. Sure, Jacques. What? You don't trust me, Dorian? You know, if you need something from your dad, you might as well just ask me. I don't think... Why can't I turn my wife? Why would you? It's a fair question. We, uh... You asked how we're doing. We stretched ourselves thin, making sure all you guys were able to turn. It's my fault, really. It's my idea to make sure you weren't all just Ventru. That would have been one thing. You know, it's our right. But, uh... We had to pull in a lot of favors to get you all... specialized. I felt like it was important to diversify the family. Diversify the portfolio, essentially. The family. Yeah. Doesn't really but feel that's... like a family. It is a fucking family. My wife and my kids are my family, Jacques. I don't know. And when the time we... comes, we'll see about turning them. We turned Anna. It's not impossible. But right now, we're stretched thin. We, at, we owe a lot of favors, okay? And there's a reason why we want to make sure you all were turned. We had the problems with Anna and what she was doing, of course. But, uh... We got other enemies, too. Probably gonna be meeting some of them tonight. Maybe These little gatherings, it's Elysium, it's all... You can't touch anybody while you're there. But because of that, a lot of old wounds usually get opened up. Meeting people you swore you'd never speak to again. Any in particular that we should know about? <sighs> Mostly can... blue blood bullshit. Silas will induce your door into them. All right. Take it seriously. Get a good read on them. It. I'm going to take it seriously, Jock. I always do. And on that, you all get yourselves ready for this night. And my question is, do you all wear, have anything specific that you would wear to a night like this? If it's a formal event at a Chicago symphony, what would yeah. you all be dressed in? Silas would, you know, obviously not wear his doctor's coat and he would wear he, you know, there's probably a nice suit that he wore if he goes to doctor's conferences before he was embraced. He probably would wear that. He wouldn't go too fancy, but he would don the proper attire. Hmm. Yeah, I, I could probably, ra you know, I could raid Val's old room probably for a fancy <laughs> dress. I bet she's got something in here that I can actually wear instead of my, like, cute e-girl clothing <laughs> that she got that I wear. <laughs> um... I, I yeah. I think Dorian comes to the house more often than most. There's probably a good amount of family business and meetings that happen here. So uh, I, he probably has clothes here, like for events and stuff. Yeah, I, I imagine he does. And very many nice suits that are available at uh, in your repertoire. And so... You all don some nice clothing. Uh, you get yourselves nice and dressed up, maybe fancy colognes and perfumes, and get yourselves ready to go. As uh, Jacques as well is dressed in a nicer attire. What does Jacques wear for this for this evening? Uh, overcoat, button-up vest, nice shirt, a scarf mm. for while I have to get out of the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, says. 
It's uh, even at night in a nice night in Chicago, it still can get cold and you maintain the facade that you feel cold. So in the summer days, you wear summery type clothes and in the winter, you wear winter type clothes to maintain that masquerade that you feel warmth or cold. But of course, it doesn't matter for any of you. But you dress up and you get yourselves ready for this event where you will be surrounded by other kindred of Chicago. Not sure what to expect, but knowing that this is the first time many of you are interacting with other kindred besides yourselves. Marcus the driver pulls up and you all begin on your way to the loop. And we will take our break and return in just 10-ish moments and our coterie will be there at Elysium, their first Elysium in Chicago. So don't go anywhere, everybody. Stay tuned for the Elysium. We will be right back. Time to party. Yeah, Elysium. <laughs> Blood. Blood.
family time. We return to Ancestral Blood, our VTM 5th edition chronicle, where our kindred are in a large black limo, driving through the streets of Chicago from Gold Coast on their way to the Chicago Loop, to Symphony Center, uh, located within the Loop, where the Chicago Symphony Orchestra often does play. This evening, they are not performing, but there is a private event happening at the Symphony Center, and the public is not allowed in, though there are some members of the public outside. As you arrive, you see that there is a sign that says private event, invites only. And as you're making your way there, it's a quiet ride, a little tense. Silas and Jacques are talking about some things of previous Elysiums that they've been to, and Silas cracks a joke that, hey, Look, might be tense tonight, but nothing was spicier than the last Elysium when the prince allowed Clan La Sombra into the Camarilla. That, that Don't was one of the Don't even get me more... started. The, you, the look on all of the other Ventures' faces when that happened, it was, it was quite something. But uh, now we got La Sombra running around. I mean, what's what's next? They're going to allow Samichi in the, the Camarilla? Like, once you let one in, you let them all in, you know? So it's just, it's it's becoming, I, I, I don't agree with the move, but, you know, that's that's how it is, I guess, in Chicago. Well, you know, <sighs> I used to roll with a Samichi a long time back. Why am I not surprised? I, hopefully they didn't, uh, you know carve your face out and make it their own. I wanted them to. Uh, maybe Thought make maybe you a new they face. Could mm, fix the yes. look, but son of a bitch of it doesn't take. Uh, uh, just so you all know, and uh, Silas goes to you all, things between the prince and I have been a little tense since the things that happened with Anna we did have to report. Uh, so you all know, uh, you're your mother, um, we did tell the prince what happened. Um, and she, they are, it's between us and the prince and the sheriff and their hounds that, uh, that happened. It was reported and because we took the matters into our hands, it was more of a slap on the wrist kind of thing. And, uh, we left it at that, but it's a little tense still. So what's the... What's the play here? You know, what's, what are we doing? Are we, are we trying to make friends? Are we trying to present a strong front? Are we trying to. I just think don't strong want. Strong front is about yes. right. Again, if anybody introduces themselves to you, be polite and don't make a fool of yourself, is all I can ask. Easier said than done. <sighs> well, I suppose we will enter now. And as you do, there is a small line of other kindred, and there are some people who try to make their way in the door and are turned away. Uh, as you approach the person at the door, uh, there are three people. A woman with short ashen hair and piercing blue eyes. She's beautiful and stunning when you look at her. There are two men uh, standing between her and they uh, look at you. Ah, the Lysander family. I could not, not recognize you all from a mile away. And the woman looks at you all. Uh, and it's this one, uh, George. I'm Annabelle, Keeper of Elysium, Clan Toreador. It's nice to meet you all. Silas Sr., good to see you. And he nods, Annabelle, I hope everything is well within the Clan of the Roses. It is as good as it can be, I suppose, but excited to meet your entire family. And uh, she looks at, and which is which? Which is the junior and which is the not? Ooh. Uh, yes, that, that is what she looks like. <laughs> I am Silas Lysander Jr. 
Ah, yes. And so are you the Ventru, or... No, is... Clan Tremere. Oh, Tremere. Oh, You'd mysterious. You'd be looking for me, for the Ventru. Oh! <laughs> and Dorian would step forward and, and <laughs> offer his hand. Very nice to meet you. Uh, Dorian, is it? Dor That's right. Uh -huh. mm. Dorian, Silas, and... That Val or Willow? Um, she does not pay attention to this woman at all. <laughs> she is looking somewhere else. Completely. This is Willow. When she hears her name, she then... Uh, hi, it's nice um, to meet you. Let me guess. Malkavian. Their minds are always elsewhere. It's so cute. <laughs> so you're a Toreador? <sighs> yes. So you know where Val is? I have seen your sister, yes. Is she doing well? She is. She's doing wonderful things for Clan Toreador. That's nice. Hm. Too bad she couldn't make it tonight, but she's quite busy. Yeah. Well, uh, they will just be checking your bags, of course. We just want to make sure there's no weapons or anything else we have to worry about any blood magic things you know how it is um and then you'll all be uh, welcome in and two men um also very handsome uh one with short brunette hair and one with long blonde hair uh they just uh grab any bags that you might have uh, there's precious cargo in my bag and she'll unzip it and uh, <laughs> a little Machiavelli will come out. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> the, the Silas Senior just oh. looks and we just lost oh, oh no! Did we lose the stream too? No. Stream chat. Streams up. Streams good. Oh. We just okay. lost our feed. That's fine. Continue. Okay. Uh, so uh, they look at this. Uh, um. We this usually like. don't allow animals um, within Elysium in case, you know, there's any thing with no ghouls or retainers or famulus or things like that. Um, I think we can make an exception just, maybe this one time, huh? He's just a normal rat. Oh. Um, it's, her, uh, it's her emotional support rat. I have a license for him. Um, she pulls it out. Jock and Willow, uh, just roll me a charisma persuasion just to see. <laughs> uh, since the both of you are kind of doing this, both of you roll uh, and tell me how many successes you get. Charisma persuasion. Uh, two successes. Two successes? E. Um. One success. One success. What are we uh, supposed to do with them? Uh, and with, at Jacques, she first, when he says, can you make an exception, she kind of looks, now Jacques, but then she sees Willow pleading and handing uh, the emotional support uh, documents. I've got the little, <laughs> I got that under <laughs> him in my purse. Yes. I pull it out. Like this is, um, if, you know what? F the Lysander family are guests, honored guests tonight. So sure. I suppose we will make an exception. And He'll allow stay the in the back. Thing. Yes, please. Um, just, you know, not around mm. the other patrons so they don't ask questions or anything like that. And she zips it back up and puts it over her shoulder. You, um, you also said they, they asked for weapons, right? So, yes. Uh, so you strap, like, brother! Yeah, so Dorian would pull out a, a pistol and give it to one of the security <laughs> guards. Brother, strap! I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't realize that they'd be... Oh, you did my read, God! Um, you did read my invitation, did you not? I wrote it handwritten. Each one of them, uh, Annabelle says, there's no, uh, no fighting, so you wouldn't have any need for this gun at Elysium. Come now, Dorian. That's his emotional of course support not. gun. Just an mm. oversight. Oh, he'll learn in time. 
Making a great start so far, Silas Senior. Uh, and <laughs> she takes the gun. <laughs> One with and the rat, one with the gun. <laughs> we'll check it at the coat check and make sure you grab it on the way out or else I'll hold on to it. It's perfectly mm. fine with me. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope to see you all later. And, I lean over uh, Willow's shoulder. Fucking toy doors and Venture, they're all like this. They're going to treat Malkavians and Nos Nos. They treat us like crap everywhere we go. You'll get used to it, though. <clears throat> he notes this. She nods. And you all walk inside the symphony hall. Uh, in the lobby, there are some... Uh, you see, this at this point, it is all kindred. It is all vampires. Uh, you are inside an area that is now exclusive to your kind. And the lobby is is somewhat busy. There's maybe... 20 to 30 people having their own private discussions. And you do see on the side a bar where there is refreshments being served and in the form of Vitae, fresh Vitae blood. Nice. Uh, in very fancy uh, glasses for people to take. And you see many of the patrons here, all of these red wine glasses partaking in this delicious wine for the evening. Mm -hmm this beautiful Vitae. And uh, as you uh, make your way around, uh, your father kind of ushers you all into the main hall, the main uh, symphony hall. And as you enter into this symphony hall, you're greeted by these beautiful white marble columns, these intricate carvings. It's a large, beautiful auditorium. And there's this, all of these seats of wood paneling. Um, the ceiling has a beautiful chandelier and pictures on the ceiling. It's pristine. You may all have been here before for various nights of symphony. You, Willow, you especially have probably been here for an occasional evening out. And uh, you take a look around. There is a lower level and an upper level. And you do see various groups of kindred scattered without. On the upper, not as many, but you see a few. There's a couple of kindred talking to each other, and you see some of the, what you would discern to be Nosferatu. Uh, as some of them are in appearance and some of them not. They keep to the corner, kind of to themselves. But you see others mingling about. There uh, are various, what you would see as cliques, just like you probably would expect. There are clicks. And in front and center of the symphony hall, your father points out, that is where the Ventru usually hang out and the Toreador, yes. Uh, some of the less popular clans of the city, the uh, Nosferatu and the Ministry usually hang up, up above. Uh, it's... Uh, the, the Tremere, oh, and he points out to you, Silas, you may, you know, see your Tremere buddies. And there, you see a small handful of Tremere uh, in one of the corners as well, uh, with the regent, uh, Abraham Ducible, who you've met before, uh, sitting in the center. And there's probably about, if you, what you, maybe it's to your surprise, only about 200 or so people here. It's not like it's crowds of people this would definitely not fill the full orchestra it's a smaller it's a small crowd of kindred is this really the amount of kindred that are in chicago only 200 maybe more are out there but this is who's shown up 200 or so sh uh, uh, kindred and it's about 30 minutes until the the performance starts and then another 30 minutes where the prince will be saying his piece so you all have some time, and your father says, well, I will leave you all to it. I am going to make my way toward the Ventru. Dorian, if you would like to join along. Of course. The rest of you, feel free to spend some time before the prince comes. But once the prince does come, make sure you're sitting front and center with me. And he takes his leave. Uh, he goes with you, Dorian, to actually grab a drink first. 
Uh, the two of you go to the bar to grab a glass of Vite. And as you do, they ask you what type you would like. Oh, uh, do they mean, uh, do they mean type of blood or do they mean type of person? And they would ask what type of person you would like, as they have various types. Uh, you know, I'm not going to deny I have uh, high standards. Tend to go for someone who's uh, a little successful. Someone uh, with a little experience and money. Yes, and they know that... Specifically, Ventru tend to have very specific tastes, so they prepare many various vitae mixtures and tastes for all preferences. Uh, and so they do hand you uh, somebody who is would, would have rich blood. And okay. uh, you uh, are able to partake, and you can sate uh, one dot of hunger uh, from this. And... You, uh, you guys make your way over. Willow and Silas, what yes. would you, the two of you be doing in this free time? I think Silas would look over to Willow and to continue their talk from the house, he'll, he'll look at her and he'll, you know, he'll honestly be like, if you, if you need me, you can, all you have to do is ask. You know that, right? I know. I just... I don't know if you understand. You'd be surprised what I understand, my, my little willow lisp. Have hmm. a good night, okay? And if you need me, find me. Okay. She looks at you very timidly like a, well, it's just me now. Do you want to get a drink? Okay. Then follow me. She looks, where's Jacques at? Where'd he go? Jacques, what are you up to? He was well, I'm one. following yeah. uh, Dorian Silas Sr. Okay. So the three of them are making their way toward the front where the Ventru are. The two of you are going to head over to grab some drink. Mm -hmm. Yes. You head over to this nice bar as well, and they ask the same thing. What type would the two of you like? Hmm. Do you have any smokers on tap? Ooh. We do have some substances in our drinks. Not anything too heavy. It is an Elysium after all. But yes, they do have that vitae for you. And they hand it over. Mm. Mm. Nice. Okay. You're not in for you. Get that fresh nicotine hit. Um... <laughs> Do you have anyone who is maybe a musician? Hmm. Well, you are lucky that we are in a symphony, so... We do have some of that more fresh, actually. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> nice. They uh, hand you a glass of Vitae as well from a Chicago Symphony Orchestra <laughs> musician. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. It's and a I local sampling. Oh, nice. I, got a, I got a local sampling tonight. Local brewery right there. You got there. that nice. local brew? Yeah. <laughs> you got a violinist You're... from Oh my god. <laughs> as as I deserve. Oh my god. A little fresh one dot, and... you said. Yes. And so uh you all may uh sleep one dot of hunger. Um but as per uh the usual for all of you, um, as kindred, you cannot go lower than one dot to zero. You cannot go to hunger zero. You will always have that twinge of hunger living in you unless you drain somebody completely dry. Um, so if you, so for example, if you did just only have one dot of hunger and you were drinking, it wouldn't fully, like you can enjoy it, but it wouldn't sate you to zero. You would still just be at yeah. one. Um, but if you have two, you can, uh, yeah, slate that down to one. Um, so. Uh, 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 miss, can I get a tall glass of somebody nobody will miss? Of course. Damn. Um, uh, Thank you. And uh, she hands you uh, a nice, uh, a larger goblet of this particular drink uh, to you, Jacques, as you are a, 
a bit of one of the elders of the group. Not an elder in the the mechanical sense, but you are an older kindred. So you get yeah, a little I, I, I get I get some of the perks. I don't get all the respect, but you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Question for the storyteller. Yes. Since I have high functioning addict as one of my merits, I add Mood. one dice pool to any one category of the drug or when I feed on someone with the drug, would that count since I asked for a smoker and Silas yes. is an ex-smoker? I would say yes. Okay, and the pool, is that an intelligence wits resolve or is a pool like a whole social, mental? Yes, I would say it would be for the full, like social, physical, or mental. Got it, okay. Oh. I'll yes. move it to social since we're at a social activity. Good idea. And Silas is not a very sociable person. <clears throat> and <clears throat> as you all are in, in, enjoying your drinks, Willow, you notice somebody staring at you. Uh, it's Why are people staring at me? <laughs> a, a, a man. Um, he Why is... is- you are like your mind. You're kind of like not fully paying attention to all your surroundings and all of the people who are around you, but you do see this man uh, looking at you. Um, he's well dressed, as everybody is, in a uh, in a more colorful suit, and he uh, wears a turtleneck, uh, a nice uh, fancy turtleneck, and has glasses that are like sunglasses. Um, but have like a color tint to them. Uh, he looks fashionable. Um, he has uh, like an olive complexion, uh, more tan than, you know, some of the other vampires that you've seen. And uh, he has his hair kind of tied back um, and he's wearing these very nice designer clothing. Oh. And he uh, begins to approach you. Uh, well, my brother's still here. And Silas, you you are here, and you notice this. Um, you uh, must be Willow. Lysander, I could not not notice you from so far away. We're just having I've, a little drinky with her brother. <laughs> I've heard things about you. I am friends with many Malkavians, and uh, well, the circles of Malkavians, they are the network, as you all call them. It can be... Uh, it's a bit more, uh, it's, th- people talk is really what I'm trying to say. Uh, uh, my name is Alec. Alec Romas de Leon. De Leon. Ooh, wow, uh, what a name. <laughs> I am of clan ministry, and uh, I'm an art collector, really. So I've heard of your artistic talents. She looks between this man, she looks to Silas, she looks to this man, she looks to Silas, like a... M- more confused that someone came up to speak with her. She is a fantastic artist, is she not? Mm. Silas Lysander Jr. Your name again uh, was? Uh, Alec. Alec. A- A-L-U-C is how it's spelled. Alec. Alec. Um, oh, that's, that's nice. Alec. Uh, yes. And uh, Silas, you are uh, the uh, brother, then. He's my Correct. older brother. Hmm. Oldest, actually. Well, uh, it is nice to meet some of the newer Lysander family. I have seen your father at Elysium, though he and I have not spoke much. You and me both. It's not one of his strong suits is to, he's not a great conversationalist. Hmm. Well, I run a few galleries uh, in the city. So I have heard about you uh, through, again, through the network. And, uh, well, I wanted to invite you to one of my galleries. Uh, Specifically, we're hosting more of a gala of sorts. (gasps) And I wanted to see if you could attend. Oh, I would love to. And see, seeing seeing Willow get all excited and bubbly, I think Silas will he'll he'll just he'll kiss her on the top of the head and just say, Rem- <laughs> "Remember what I told you." And he'll just he'll let her have her time. He's not going to hover. She will nod. 
in acknowledgement to him. Um, you said you're from the ministry? I've never heard of that, ever. Yes, we... Um, uh, no offense. No, it's none taken. Uh, our clan is not... Uh, not as popular uh, in Chicago as some of the other clans. So uh, we are, like, technically part of the Camarilla. At least I am. Not all of Ministry are. But, uh, you know, we, uh, yeah, we're kind of not as popular. So, but one thing that is in common, we like to have a good time. So you're exclusive then. That's, that's really what it is. Yes, in a way, yes. Well, but. what does that give you? I know, um, like, my brother, he has this church he goes to, and uh, Dorian's just the same. Hmm. Well, for me, really, it is, it is all about my art and oh. having a good time. You know... I do, it's kind of interesting, though I am ministry, I feel like I have many aspects of a Toreador. Some even think maybe I should have been a Toreador, but... You do remind me a little bit of my sister. My yes. sister's a Toreador. Ah, oh, yes, Val, I've heard about her as well. Really, things get around very quickly uh, among the circles. Uh, it's funny we have these formal events for formalities, but I'm pretty sure everybody here probably knows who you are. How does that happen if... If we only are supposed to meet at these times, or are we allowed to meet at other times? A lot of us do. I mean, I spend most of my nights these nights with, well, with one of my partners who is also a kindred. Um, and they are, yeah, we, we, we don't really, we talk about things all the time. As you meet more people, I'm sure you will have more friends and learn about some of these secret gossipy things, so. Oh, is there anyone I should meet or shouldn't meet? <laughs> I'm sure in due time there will be some that you will meet. But for now, my card to my gallery. She'll take it. And it's a very sleek card that says uh, Galleria Nomada. Uh, and uh, there's a date on it. It's about... Uh, a week and a half from now, there is a what? private event, a private gallery I get event. To go somewhere. Mm. <laughs> Yay, a treat! She'll reach out her hand and, and she'll shake his very enthusiastically. I hope you enjoy your time at Elysium. Thank you. Mm. So nice to meet you, Alec. You as well, Willow. And he uh, smiles and takes his leave. I made a friend. Uh, My first kindred friend. <laughs> Silas, you were ducking out. Yep. Um, where are you headed off to? To go shake Regent Ducible's hand. Ah, uh, yes. And so you make your way over to uh, the Tremere Circle. Uh, it is also a smaller circle uh, in comparison to some of the other groups that you see gathered. There's, when you look over at the Ventru, there's like seven or eight of them chatting. And then you see the Toreador. There's like eight or nine of them. For the Tremere, you see three. Uh, and you make your way over to uh, Abraham Ducible, the regent of the Tremere. He is, as always, a well-dressed older man. And he has a red... Uh, red blazer with nice pants and wears his signature necklace with a uh, looking like a, I guess, kind of magical hermetical uh, inscription on it and carrying his cane. And he's talking to another uh, two kindred. Uh, both are um, women. Uh, one of them is uh, another kindred you recognize. You've seen her around. Her name is Sun Chi. And uh, another Tremere you don't know as well, but they are all talking. And you uh, head over to uh, Abraham and he says, ah, Silas, it is good to see you. Regent Ducible, how are you? 
doing as well as I can for this evening. I hope things are well with you and your family. Oh, they are. My apologies for leaving earlier from the Chantry. You know how elder Silas Lysander can get, I assume. Yes, and my apologies for not informing you of this evening, as I was aware this Elysium was going to be held, but I figured it, it, the news would make its way to your family, and would rather your father break the news to you than myself. It's quite all right. So what do you think of things so far, your first Elysium? It's quite odd, if I may speak so frankly. It, everyone just seems so fake. Mm. <laughs> that is the word. And that is how they are. It's... I'm surprised more members of the Chantry are not here. Hmm. Yes, many of them truly don't feel the need to show up, but as long as at least some of us are representing, we do not have a member of the Primogen Council currently as representing Clan Tremere, so... Not many of them like to show up. Would I know what that is? Um, you've heard the word. Uh, you yeah, know, I'll make I'm, you roll. I'll make you roll for it. I mean, I'm I'm also down to just ask him. I just wanted to make sure above the table if I knew what it what it would be. Uh, you would. You've heard the word tossed around, but you're not entirely sure. So you can either make like an intelligence politics, or you can just ask him. Oh yeah. You said primogen. Yes. Yes. This. Primogen Council, what, what is it exactly? I, I've heard the word tossed around quite a bit, but oh, I've never course. really been informed exactly what it is. Hmm. I see your father's lessons are uh, waning in some ways. Uh, the Primogen are a, essentially representatives of certain clans uh, by the prince. So hmm. they are kind of like aides uh, to him, and they... While they don't always represent the will of every member of the clans they represent, they at least are the voice for that particular clan. And there's only a certain amount of members of this cabinet, one would say. So mm. not every clan gets a seat on the Primogen Council. I see, I see. Well, that is a good thing to learn. I'm always like, I always enjoy staying up to date on certain political issues, especially when it involves, well, who I am now. Hmm. Yes. I must ask you, Silas. Looking around this room, this symphony hall, it's interesting. Do you, do you notice anything interesting about the individuals here. And you can roll me a yeah. wits awareness to see if you can pick up anything weird or even a wits insight if you can, if you wanna, if you wanna get a read on him, you can roll me a wits insight. If you wanna get a read on the room, you can roll me a wits awareness. Two successes. Uh, and with and that, wit, wits awareness, looking at wits the awareness. Room. Yep. You uh, begin to look around, and what you notice is you begin to see your brother and your father and Uncle Jacques um, making their way over to the other tr uh, ventru, and you can see there is a bit of a tension between them, and. You can see them as Jacques is making his way over. The other Ventru begin whispering amongst each other. They also look at Silas and begin whispering and talking to him and laughing. It's... It seems like there's some sort of play of power among them. You're not able to fully make out like 
who is bigger than who. But one thing you do notice is it does seem like your brother, your father, and your uncle, they're not respected mm. as they make their way over. The tone changes as they walk over. Well, I just saw a bunch of Venture clutch their pearls. An unwanted Nas approach a group that he's not supposed to be. Yes. Yes, and though Nosferatu do have their things about them that make people recoil away, Jacques is their elder, and they don't respect him. They don't respect your father. They're so much older. Things among the Ventru must be tense. If your father is not fully respected, if Jacques is not fully respected, how do they have the power that they have? I mean, money does make the world go round. I'm sure that has a play in it. Money, yes. Money and power. Something about your family. Your family power. That's got them all, got them all twisted up. And that's the question, what is it? There is another one I'd like to point out to you. You see that gentleman over there and he points to a gentleman among the venture crowd. He's talking to another woman who's very well dressed. He looks younger. He looks about your age, hmm. well dressed. He looks the part of a Ventru. He's got slick back blonde hair. That gentleman over there. They say his ancestors once helped start the Camarilla. Caden Barlett is his name. A young Ventru, probably the same generation as you. He owns an investment company. And his family line has a lot of power, too. Would we have heard of the Barletts from being in Chicago at all? You would have, and I'm not going to make you roll for this. Um, actually, I am going to make you roll for it. Ooh, hey, thanks hey, for the raid. Thanks for the raid. Welcome, everybody. Welcome in. Uh, I'm going to have you roll because you're not Dorian. Um, so okay. you're not as entrenched in this. Uh, just an intelligence politics. And let me know what you get. Three successes. Three successes. Yes, you have heard of Bar Barlett, um, a, a company, investment company known as Barlett and Zenith. Um, okay. And they are, yes, they're a well-known, pretty high, also pretty high-ranking investment firm. Um, your, your father has mentioned them before, but it's not super your forte as far as business sure. goes. Yep. But yes, you've heard the name. Uh, yes, the Bartlett's. I'm familiar with the name. My father has indeed complained about them a few times, but I unfortunately am not privy to the inner workings of the businesses that them and the Lysanders have worked on in the past or against each other in the past, to be frank. Yes, well, in some ways this goes beyond business. This is about blood, as it always is with us. I would just say maybe perhaps for your own interests, keep an eye out for the Bartlett family as they link back to family known as Hardestat, a much older line of Ventru. Bartlett's and Hardestat's. I'll keep an ear out. Just a tip for you, Silas. Enjoy your evening, and hopefully things will uh, go smoothly with the prince tonight. Thank you, Regent. You as well. Have a good night. 
And uh, with the prim and proper discussion of the Tremere, we swap over to our Ventru as Silas Sr. and Dorian, you make your way over to the front of the hall where you see uh, two, uh, you see a, a large group of Tremere amongst each other, but your father makes his way over to two individuals uh, they are, they look like they're kind of like the, the front and center. They're like the main, uh, attraction here. Like everybody's kind of, the conversation is directed around and revolves around them. Um, one, they're both older gentlemen. Uh, they both look like rich old white dudes, unfortunately. Um, but they, uh, look at you and one of them has a cigar in his hand. Large man with a cigar, well-dressed, and the other an older man with glasses and also well-dressed suit. You uh, walk over and he says, ah, Silas, we were just talking about you, uh, the gentleman with the glasses says. And the other gentleman with the cigar begins smoking it. Yes, Silas. <laughs> I heard the company isn't doing that well these days. Poor ethos investment. <laughs> and Silas says, well, I, Silas almost looks a little flustered by this as he wasn't expecting uh, these two to immediately jump to the insults. There are other new investments coming in, Ballard, though. So, uh, you know, Ballard Industries probably isn't always on the up and up as well. And uh, Ballard laughs. <laughs> Look, I know how it is. I've shorted your company uh, quite a few times. What was it last time? Eight million shares? <laughs> I made quite the killing on it. And they are just kind of joking about with your father. And they eventually, as they're exchanging these laughs, smoking their cigar, having this old boys talk, they look over. So is that the, the junior? Is that uh, the new venture we can welcome in? Is that Silas Jr. or is that the other one? Dorian. It's Dorian. Dorian. Dorian Lysander Ventru, welcome to the Clan of Kings. Well, it's good to be here. It's good to meet all of you. And he, uh, the more, uh, the larger gentleman says, I am Horatio Ballard, Ballard Industries. And this is Alan, Alan Sovereign. And he uh, extends a hand to shake. Uh, and they both shake your hand, and then they look over, oh, and do I see you? Do my eyes deceive me, or is that your tricks again, Jacques? Oh, no, your eyes don't deceive you. I'm still here. Still kicking. Oh, Nothing's yeah. taking your, uh, your head off just yet, has it, Jacques? No, I see you two haven't taken each other's heads off. Mm, there you well, guys. I would... <laughs> and the larger gentleman, Ballard, says, well, I would never. That's my child. I wouldn't do anything to him. <laughs> well, you know, a child, sometimes, you know, usually they, they come around to bite us, don't they? I would know. Mm -hmm. I rub Silas Sr.'s shoulders. <laughs> oh, the child and sire relationship, it's, it's always one to reminisce over. Uh, Ballard says as he grabs the hand of his child that he sired many years ago, Alan Sovereign. So, Dorian. Dorian, is it? Ballard. Yes. So, uh, what's your take on the, on the company? You know, your company, oh, Ethos. How do you think it's doing? Well, you said we were struggling, and it's true. We've had some hits to the stock price, and things haven't been going as well as we'd like. But that's just the normal rise and fall of business. 
and we're going to be around like we always have been. Mm. You know, when you go and travel outside of Chicago, I mean, you stay in our hotels, right? And mm. 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 in this city, when you need secure private communications, Second City Communications, our network, that's where you go. Mm. 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 Yes. And when you need bagged blood reserves, when things aren't going so good, VMG is there to help you out. We always have you. So it's it seems to me that even though we might be taking a little bit of a hit right now publicly, the core of what we really do stays strong. Mm. You hear that? Mm. My company is a survivor, just like Dorian, just like me. You know how good I am at surviving, don't you? Couldn't mm, say the same yes. for uh, your sire, could we? And uh, Sovereign uh, smirks at that, as does Ballard. Well... You do both, you all do run a very important business for Chicago, but money, the banks, that's where it's at. Where the bailouts come in, that's where Ballard Industry comes in. That's where we give you the money. So you'll always need us. Maybe. Maybe uh, we might need you to bail us out if things really go badly, but... You and I both know it's just a matter of time before this drug gets approved. And once it does, huh. well, that stock price is going to go through the roof. <laughs> and we're good. Uh, mm, well, that would be so a sight to see because we certainly need it. Look, I'm, I'm on your guys' court. I'm cheering for you. I hope that we see that number go up for Ethos. I'm sure Jackson would like to see it too. Make us Blue Bloods proud. I'm sure you're gonna do great, Dorian. Thanks. And they continue to kind of bicker amongst each other, talk about some of the old, the old guard talk that they have and you can tell Dorian, um, actually make me a, um, I'm gonna say also an intelligence politics. Okay. Uh I wanna see what you gather from these conversations. Oh, wait, did it not roll? Oh, okay, I see. Oh, three successes. Three successes. So you gather from these conversations that it definitely seems like these two guys are kind of the inner circle of the Ventru, and they're like, they have a crew that they like that are like the in and then the other venture are kind of the out and everybody's kind of talking about this play for who can get jackson's favor the most uh the prince and like what kind of things they're gonna do that they'll get like stay in the inner circle and they kind of are like it's like a a, a dick measuring contest um, of who has done the most and who will do the most and so they are just like continuing this kind of conversation um, your, uh, your father is keeping up for the most part, um, but you can tell, like, he, he needs some practice. Uh, he definitely needs some work, um, as far as keeping up with all of the, this, this facade and this play that all the Venture are doing with each other. But... Hmm. It's kind of left at that, and you, uh, you know, 
you you listen in on this conversation, but there's not really much else for you to contribute. These are just kind of things that you observe and note among your first interactions with others of Clan Ventru. Uh, okay. And with this, uh, you all kind of have a moment to reconvene if you wish to, as the orchestra has finished performing, the private orchestra has finished. It's a smaller like quartet of only just a few instruments playing in the background. And um, things, uh, some people begin to disperse and begin taking their seats because when the next like 10 to 15 minutes is when uh, Jackson is supposed to be entering the stage. Uh, is our, is our dad with us? Um, your father is, yes. I would say he has stuck around. Bailey. You did great, Dorian. You did real good. Why are they treating us like we're, like, the lame kid at the birthday party? Like, why? I told you we owed favors. We're not and on favor. the strongest footing. All right. I, it just seems like there's some kind of gossip going around about us. I mean, you saw how they acted when we showed up. That, that's normal? Mm -hmm. Might need to have a chat about these favors that you guys called in. Obviously not yeah. here. What exactly did you have to give up to get us turned? It's nothing too bad. It's... We don't have to worry about the ones we owe favors to. They need us around. We need to worry about the vultures like those two. The ones blowing smoke up our ass while we're standing next to them. Yes. While everybody has a big talk at these things, they... They still don't amount to the things that we have. So, we just have to keep our own composure and it will be fine. We have to get through the night. I try to see Ballard and Sovereign as little as possible because of this. This is just how things are. Well, what are we, what are we doing about it? I mean, at least on the corporate level, right? I mean, Ballard Industries, how strong are they really? I'm sure there's something we could do. Push at mm. them. Not yet. We can't make a play on those two yet. And what about... What about the blonde one, Bartlett? Mm. I remember father throwing that name around quite a bit. Yeah, we gotta keep an eye on them, but... Yes, Bartlett is also a... well-known name among the circles, but I don't think we have anything to worry about. No, we'll, not yet. We'll what we need to okay? do is get the business up and running okay. again. Whatever this drug bullshit is, get that solved. Is that the Bartlett man over there? She points at the blonde man. The don't, don't point. Don't point. <laughs> I'm allowed to point. He's making a scene. Uh -uh. You don't want him to know where we look at him? Well, I'm looking at him, and he'll just see a cute girl looking at him. It's yeah, different. He'll see a Lysander. Trust me, you I don't want to be anywhere near him. You don't want to be anywhere near him. Talk to him. They. <clears throat> you know, you, you know I... the Hatfields and McCoys? You know what that is? Anyone? What, what, what yes, is that? All, what is that? Oh, what are they you're teaching we have a kids in schools with them? these days? They were, they were two families around the Civil War, Willow, that hated each other. So well, maybe they should have just talked. Yeah. No. Talking's not going to cut it. They're Ventru. You know your dad, Dorian. Do you think they're going to just talk to their enemies, or you think they're going to be cutthroat businessmen? Add being a vampire on top of that. Dorian's gonna nice. fix this. 
Yes. What do you say, Silas? You think maybe it's time to give the kid uh give the kid a shot? Yes, I think he handled himself well. He stood up for the company. So I think he will be able to fix this, yes. If any if anyone can, it's Dorian. Yes, well. Yeah. I think it's about time you put some more trust in me with this, because I do know what I'm doing. Yeah, I think so, too. You totally know what you're doing. Thanks. You're good at stuff. The rest Thanks, of us well, are on defense. That. We make sure Dorian doesn't have any problems. Well, Fair enough. if you fail, we can just drive them all mad. That a go, Willow. That to go. <laughs> she smiles. <clears throat> I well, really can do that. Leave all options on the table, I guess. Uh, no, we should do it your way first. Okay. So what's the move then? Let's What's see what the, the prince has to say. He's going to make a statement any moment now. After that, we see uh, we see about getting you set up with the business proper. What exactly is set at these Elysiums? Mm, it's, um, well, they're going to welcome you guys. Okay, that's that's a long time overdue. Beyond that, it's whatever the business is, whatever stuff the prince has to announce, whatever. Uh, it's like when I call a dinner, you know? We go through a list of agenda. Got it. Just uh, don't pipe up when he's talking. They're real Ugh. touchy on the interrupting bit. I wasn't planning on it. All right. That goes, for, that goes double for you, Willow. Okay. I whisper into my bag and I tell Machiavelli the same. <laughs> Don't say anything. <laughs> Willow, you begin to sit for a minute and... Oh no. One of those things. premonitions happens again. Oh, fun! <laughs> Suddenly, you begin to feel a vision. But we're sitting? You're sitting, and okay. the room begins to turn dark. You almost think it's about time to be the presentation. But wait a minute. No, no, this isn't, this isn't real. This is your visions again. Mm -hmm. The room is dark and you begin to dart your eyes and, and look around and there's just a single spotlight on a man in the corner. You look and as you kind of gaze, it's the area where you notice the Toreador hanging out. You see that woman and it's kind of a, not a full visage in your vision, but you see the woman who is at the door, Annabelle. You see the handsome gentleman that was standing next to her and the other gentleman. All clan of the roses, the Toreador, and a larger, larger group of them. But then in the center, you see one man. He is well-dressed, dark hair. He has something around his neck, a ribbon. It doesn't look like it is sitting right on him. And you see him begin to adjust it. And as he does, it begins Slowly cutting away at his neck, you see this in the vision. 
you see more and more the voices saying in your head, he's... Dead. Where's it going? It's gone. Now it's gone. And suddenly... It goes dark. Darker, darker, and he vanishes. And he is gone. And you're suddenly brought back to this reality where you feel everybody around you talking, your, your siblings sitting next to you. They weren't fully next to you in that moment. You see Silas, Dorian, your father, Jacques. You then again kind of gather your surroundings you look over, you see the Toreador, you see everybody mingling, and you see that man. The ribbon around his neck that you saw in the vision is gone. But he's just there, talking he's, with the rest of the he's roses. He's just there. He's just yes. there. Um, I turn to probably Father and Jacques. How soon until the prince comes up? Probably. It's probably in the next, like, minute, Willow. Perfect, I've got a minute. And she yeah. darts Don't to the wow. other side wow. of the no. room. Uh, Willow, no, Willow, you should really stay. And she gets up and begins running to this man. Like, it's she she tries not to make a scene, very, but it's like the swift, super I'm... Super power walking? It is power walk, but, like, not a run, because she doesn't want to make a scene. But it's uh, going to be a scene, no matter what. <laughs> Sorry, Silas, this is normal, I think. Uh, uh, I'm going to the man. Could one of you maybe grab her in a minute? If the lights begin to dim, could you just make sure she's back in her seat? I'll take care of it. Thank you. Willow, you head over to the Roses, and they are uh, all very beautiful uh, individuals, and um, they, they notice you running over, and uh, what do you do as you approach? Um, she moves past every single person to get to that man, very politely, very much a like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, and will just stand in front of him and stare. Hi. Oh. Hello? Hi, you're in danger, I think. In danger? I'm Willow. It's very nice to meet you. I'm, uh, Ilio Costa. I, I think someone's gonna try and chop your head off. My head off? <laughs> I saw it in a, in a vision. Uh, I get them sometimes. Oh, right. Are you, uh, you know, many of us are gifted with those types of things, too. Um, it's, you know, usually some sort of, like, weird... It's not usually that clear, uh... Oh, I, I saw someone tying a ribbon around your neck and it was cutting your head off. Oh, well, that's, uh... Do you wear oh. a necklace? Do you have a necklace on? And... We uh... Go. Uh... And he, like, looks a little shocked. Um, and the rest of the... The, the other Toreadors are beginning to notice this. And no! they, um... <laughs> they... She's looking between him and her brother, like... <laughs> my, my apologies... You beautiful roses. I, my sister must be confused with something. Will, Willow, come on, dear. Come on. She gives the man, like, she moves with him, but, like, she gives him a very, like... Uh, um, and he just looks very confused. Um, the one of the, uh, Annabelle actually makes her way over. Oh, it's so cute, isn't it? Um, uh, is that, was that your first vision that you saw? No. Hello. Oh. I have them quite often, and they always come true. Hmm. Uh, that's... You would be the first, then, because many of us have had visions like that, and they don't always... They don't always come true. Oh. Well, when I had a vision that my mother would die, she did. Oh. So, I just saw him die, so he's going to. W w uh, Willow. Willow, come on. She, and she's and, moving, like being, they, I assume, like guided. They, yeah. They do not want to hear about mother's passing. Come on. Uh, the, the, the Toreador smiles and she says, It's all right, Elio. It's 
He's not the first time somebody's probably want to take your head, is it? <laughs> and they laugh. <clears throat> They're laughing, but that's for reals. <laughs> and Silas, you pull your sister I'm back crazy. to the seat. No, you're not. And, Come on. And the lights do begin to dim. She sits. <clears throat> just in time, as your father looks over, you both sit down just in the right amount of time <laughs> where he... He not he approvingly nods and it gets quiet as there has been some chatter and things do get quiet. The stage illuminates and a tall gentleman enters the stage. He is has a dominating presence about him. A athletic gentleman in appearing in his early 20s, looking composed. He wears a pressed white suit with a light blue shirt, a tie, pristine. This suit must be worth at least $10,000. As he enters the stage, his presence definitely fills the room, a domineering ventru. And he looks at his kindred of Chicago, Prince Kevin Jackson, the one you've heard many things about, a young prince. The few things your father has said that the previous prince before was much older and was taken out by some of the workings of Kevin Jackson and some of his fellow kindred. And he has now assumed Chicago and is bringing a, a newer and some would even say maybe more progressive changes to Chicago and the Camarilla, allowing the La Sombra to be part of the Camarilla when they are normally a Sabbat focused clan, a clan that doesn't always agree with the Camarilla. They are now part of the city. And you even saw a few La Sombra at this evening. He makes his way to the stage with his presence and addresses the kindred. My kindred of Chicago, welcome and thank you for attending our first Elysium of this year. Maybe more to come, only time will tell. I wanted to open with some announcements of what has been happening within our city. First of all, in some more downtrodden news, I suppose, there used to be a regular opening feeding a ground event happening in the next couple of months. Many of you are familiar with it, the Taste of Chicago. Unfortunately, though it used to be an open feeding ground event, we are going to have to keep it all off limits for all of our safety as hunters and members of the Second Inquisition have been spotted monitoring and in being in that area very active and heavy. Fucking hunters. There is a bit of a, there is a bit of a chatter among the crowd as he says hunters and second inquisition. Yes, the crowd does begin to chatter a little bit at that, a bit of panic. Now don't panic at this. There were no kindred harmed at the last sighting of hunters, but they found themselves entangled with werewolves, lupine, and then the crowd even begins more talking, like, what the fuck? And it, like people begin like getting, it's like that kind of like, uh, I wouldn't say hysteria, but there is some chatter amongst the crowd. I know these are things we haven't had to worry about in some time in Chicago, but they have always been a threat. The Second Inquisition never sleeps and the lupine always make their way within our urban grounds of Chicago. So there is nothing for us to be afraid of at this moment, 
but it would be good to everybody keep your eyes and ears alert and stay away from the taste of Chicago this year for everybody's safety. Now, on the more downer news we started with, I would like to have something a bit more lighthearted to continue the evening. I'd like to welcome some of our visiting kindred from Chicago. We do have a few La Sombra visiting uh, with us for, uh, from various parts of uh, the US and overseas as well. And one moment as I pull up their name, because I forgot. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. <clears throat> Thank you for the lovely the music. music. Yes. Yeah. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Ah, here they are. We would like to welcome Sierra back into Chicago as she has had other business around and is welcome as always with open arms into Chicago. And of course, next, and, and as, she, as he says that, uh, Sierra does come up to the stage and uh, does make her presence known to all of the kindred. So he welcomes Sierra uh, and uh, she enters the stage um, and there is some chatter in the crowd about her being back in the city, but none of you were able to really pick up anything um, with her entering the stage. And she remains on the stage. And now I would like to welcome our newest embraced kindred into Chicago. As many of you know, the family of the Lysanders have been part of Chicago and been part of the Ventru line specifically for quite some time. And now we would like to welcome Silas Lysander Sr.'s children to the stage to introduce themselves to get up, Chicago. Get up, get up. Oh. I, I, I get up. I follow my brothers. <clears throat> Come on, little. <laughs> Don't fuck this up. And no, I'm not. Did you all walk up and uh, make your way to the stage. Uh, what's the marching order? Who goes on the stage first, second, and third? Uh, you, you know I'm pushing for first. Dorian can have first. <laughs> I'll go last. I'm fine with last. Dorian, Silas, and Willow begin to I'll make take, their way I'll, to the- I'll take Willow's hand as we go up on the stage. Okay, Aww. she'll take it. Gotta, gotta protect baby sister. <laughs> It'll be so cute. <laughs> they, uh, enter the stage uh, and stand next to you. Stand next to this woman. Um, and sorry, George, I didn't send you the art for her. Um, uh, but uh, Sierra, uh, she is, uh, you stand next to her and uh, she smiles at you all warmly. And Kevin looks at all of you. Kevin Jackson looks at all of you. Mr. Jackson. He takes a moment. And he introduces you all. This is Dorian of Clan Ventru, Silas Lysander Jr. of Clan Tremere, and Willow Lysander of Clan Malkavian. Now, usually uh, when we introduce new kindred to Chicago, we bring them together in what is called a coterie. And it's just natural for the three of you to be as part of a coterie. So you will all work together for anything that the Camarilla may request of you. You may work as a family and as a coterie together to help the Camarilla in our efforts. Your sister as well, Valerie, she is also part of your coterie. Though I understand she keeps things busy with the Toreador, but we would also like to announce Valerie Lysander of Clan Toreador as part of this new coterie of fledglings within Chicago. Now everybody give a warm welcome to the Lysanders and our new coterie. Yay, and yeah! <laughs> and there is a light clap. And you all are uh, kind of just 
on the stage, taking in this audience applause. And at that point, you are dismissed from the stage. Easy peasy done. <laughs> done. I was expecting the worst. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 Um, as you all head back to your we seats, should. is there anything you all say amongst each other? Uh, I'm, I'm real proud of you guys. Good job. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you. <clears throat> and that, with that, we have one last thing we need to discuss amongst all of you, Kindred. Unfortunately, I do have to end today's Elysium or at least my portion of announcing announcements of Elysium on a bit of another sour note, as some things have come to light as of recent, and we've learned about some things happening within the city that have been happening under the, not within the Camarilla Ire. It is not something I wish to do to call out certain individuals but there have been some problems unfortunately it is among clan toriador we've learned of one individual who has had much territory within the rose garden has had many ghouls has had much per has had permission to bring those ghouls into the Camarilla and within under his watching, but recently decided to turn one of those ghouls and embrace them. And well, unfortunately, Ilio, we would like for you to take the stage. And the gentleman, Elio Costa, the Toreador, begins to stand. The rest of the roses look at him in shock, and a few of them, maybe they knew this was coming. I but stare he, at them. He walks onto the stage, and he does look back at Willow. He Is begins he a to. Of yours? Shh. And no. <laughs> and he begins to look, and as he's walking on these small uh, steps to the stage, you see him looking at the exits, trying to. Willow, you're able to discern. He's trying to see if he can make an escape. I was pretty shock. Sorry. I was going to shock. He's going to run. Oh, they always try to run. But as he looks and Kevin says, now, Elio, you must have known this was coming and these things do happen and we're not intending for you to leave. And you see at the two, like, emerge the two exits with the orange signs above them, you see two people walk toward at the doors two of the hounds of Chicago. One is a person who has a hood and kind of conceals their face. You see teeth protruding from the bottom of their mouth. So it looks like they may be of Clan Nosferatu. The other stands at the door and they have uh, blonde hair and an olive complexion. They stand at either side of the door, at those two doors. And Kevin introduces, uh, I would like now for my sheriff, Damien, to also approach the stage. So at this time, um, we're gonna do a couple of things. George, these are the two hounds that are at the door. And Damien uh, also enters the stage. It's getting, it's getting intense here for a moment. I love this. As we also see the person uh, at the corner. Um, so I will give you a moment to, that is Damien. 
So uh, he's a younger, uh, he looks young. He looks like he might be like yeah, 16 or 17, um, but he carries himself very well. He walks over to Ilio. And you do see that he has on his back a sword. You see the two hounds begin to make their way toward the stage. The one with the hood over their head and the one with the blonde hair. And they keep Elio in check as he walks onto the stage. Well. Elio says, listen. I understand that this is something that we are not supposed to do, but I can assure you, my prince, that the one that I have embraced, they, they will be able to help us. They have talents. They have skills. There are many things that they can provide for us. Especially for our clan, for Clan Toreador. They own many of the clubs within Chicago. We can get more influence, more clubs. I didn't do this for nothing. Kevin looks at him. Yes, well, unfortunately, the other thing that happened is they're not a full kindred, are they? They're a thin blood. And as much as I'm sure you will plead your case that they would be useful to us and to our city, I'm sorry to say that wasn't your decision to make, Ilio. And you see the two hounds walk over and begin approaching. And Damien walks with his sword, and they begin cornering him on the stage. And within an instant before your eyes, this man is beheaded and turned to dust. Just like that, it's over. Mm. Quite the display it was. And there's no blood, no, just dust on the ground. Is it similar to how mother died? Very similar. Mm. I don't look then. I will take Willow's hand again. Protect baby. Before you, you before you avert your gaze, Willow, there yeah. is one thing you do notice. I want you to make me actually another... Wits and awareness. Okay. Oh, oopsie. Wits and awareness. Uh, four successes. Nice. Oh, nice. With four successes, right before Damien takes the head of this Toreador. You look at the two hounds, and you look at the one with blonde hair. They almost look familiar to you. Their gaze, their face, their eyes. You feel like you might have seen them before. And it takes you a minute to process this, but you go back to the night that you were embraced. The club you were at, <gasps> the place that you were, it was a person with this complexion, this bleach blonde hair. Oh my God! This person 
is your sire. You're sure of it. Oh my god, I'm not Canadian! <laughs> That's mommy. And you look and see this hound. And George, you may introduce who this yes! person is. Yes! <laughs> Oh my god, Mandy's playing my mommy? My Malkavian mommy? This, is, this looks like, this is amazing. I, I love the look. Oh my gosh. You're embodying. You're embodying the look right now, Mandy. They look out into the crowd. Kevin Jackson stands before you all. This is just a friendly reminder to everybody here to respect Camarilla traditions and do not embrace anybody within the clans without permission, especially if it's going to be somebody who is duskborn, who walks among the day. We are trying to keep a limit to those who are embraced within Chicago. And we wish that you all respect these laws, as we do not want to have punishment where my sheriff and hounds need to enact this punishment anymore. I thank you all for attending. Please enjoy the last hour of Elysium. And he exits the stage. <clears throat> Immediately. Immediately. I turn to Silas and just, what did I say? You were right. Okay. She just wants someone to know. Like a, I'd be listening. <laughs> that kind of energy. Care didn't even get a chance to go through the five stages of grief. good lesson to learn about what happens if you cross a line. I told him he was gonna die. He could have run. He could have left. He didn't believe me. Maybe that... Maybe that's his flaw. Hubris. Thought he was above the Camarilla and Kevin Jackson. Why, why won't they... Why don't they want more kindred being made? I, I don't understand. You can't just have us going and making more unchecked. Do that, eventually it's all out of control. Less less people to feed on, I guess, if there's if we outnumber the more eyes on us as well. Yeah. Less order. <gasps> Oh, um, she will turn to father. Dad, is that the one? And she'll point to the woman on the <clears throat> stage. Yes. That, that is your sire. Alexa is their name, Alexa Santos. They are of Clout Malkavian, and they are a loyal hound to the Camarilla. So I thought that they would be best for you. <clears throat> What'd you do to get them to do that? Well, I asked Kevin, or uh, Prince Jackson, I'm sorry. I asked the <laughs> prince, <Kevin>. and, <laughs> and he gave me some recommendations, and that's who I went with. I think that you may have a lot in common with them, but I should warn you that they were originally a bit reluctant to bring any new kindred into this world, and so uh, 
I don't know if they're going to hold any uh, sentimentality to the whole situation. So I can't be friends? You can certainly attempt to. Is it polite for me to do that now? If you would, well, yes. Now that the business is done, I suppose you can. She nods. I'm gonna go meet them. I'll be right back. Yes. Of course. Good luck. And you make your way over to Alexa. Oh, Alexa. Um, yes. she, uh, she approaches you very, um, uh, oh, very excitedly, but like, it's that restrained excited, like, oh, I need to be normal when I meet this person. Like, you know, maybe how you would meet like one of your favorite celebrities or something like that is what I'm picturing in like a meet and greet line. <laughs> uh, and just waits. What? Who, who you see um, probably stepping down from the stage at this point now that the business is concluded is a medium height uh, individual, non-binary, uh, wearing all black suit um, with the collar kind of open a little bit. There is a choker around their throat uh, and some like little strappy details. And... They've got very long, kind of, obviously, like, had dyed hair at some point in time, and, uh, like, you can see, like, darker roots fading into blonde, very, very long, uh, and they are stepping down from the stage as you approach, and they just kind of glance in your direction. He stands very expect expectantly in your path. Hi. Again. For the second time. Yes. Hello. For the second time. Uh, you might remember me. My name is Willow. Hmm. Right. The Lysander child. Yeah, and... When I saw you up there, I remembered, um... You know, the first time um, when we met, and it's just really exciting to meet someone who's like me. <laughs> I don't think we are alike very much at all. We are. You made me, so you have to be a little bit like me. Hmm. I kind of glance around the room. Uh, where is Prince Jackson currently? Jackson has exited the stage and anyway. is um, backstage at this point. Okay. Uh, the other hounds and the sheriff are all here as well? They are, yes. Okay. I'm, I, I look like I've stopped paying attention to you and I'm clocking where my compatriots are right now and kind of scanning the room for trouble. And it's at this point where Damien calls, Alexa, we have business. And ah, finally. Sends you and the other Nosferatu to the back and Kind of, so, she doesn't chase you, but she does call after you. We can talk some other time, I'm sure. Silas. <laughs> they, do, they do not respond to you. <laughs> they are just stalking off into the crowd very quickly. So, uh, Silas Sr. stands up and says, as a matter of fact, yes, we do have business. The rest of us, Silas, Dorian, Willow, Shocks. Shock, I'm sorry. I think it's time we have a private meeting with the prince in the back. Let's go, family. Let's head to the back, get yourselves ready, and let's go. And it's at that moment where we will end this evening's Aww, so session. <laughs> right, right before right. our meeting. So prepare yourselves 
for what you're going to say to Prince Jackson or what he's going to say or what your father is going to say, because clearly there's some business to be had, but we will find out what that business discussion is going to be next week in our private meeting with Kevin Jackson and the return of our hound, Malkavian Alexa Santos Ooh. as well. So if you'd like to see more of who Alexa is or what their motives are, who they are, tune in next week to see more of Ancestral Blood and our newly formed and introduced coterie, the Lysanders. Ooh. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Good night, bye. Machiavelli says Whoa. bye, too. Squeak, squeak, Machiavelli squeak, 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 Senpai did not. Yeah. Senpai needs to take this freaking wig off. Oh, Jesus. Dude, Senpai also you look, feels like... You look amazing, look at this thing. That was great. Ugh. Reminder, yeah, that was we so are cool. still live on mics. Oh, all yeah, right. We we're still right. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, yeah. You guys have to give us that warning. Let them, <laughs> let them hear my know. discomfort. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go take off the makeup. I gotta get these teeth guess, out. Oh, God. But Where guess what? <laughs> guess what? Next week... We'll be playing on the same screen. Yes. Oh, Surprise. Right.